Researchers find plastic breaking fungus. New research coming out of China may hold the key to dealing with the world's massive plastic waste problem. Plastic is not easily biodegradable and can take thousands of years to decompose. A group of researchers found Aspergillus tubingensis, a common soil fungus, at a dump in Pakistan. Under laboratory conditions, it was shown to break down plastic in weeks, not years. Aspergillus tubingensis has previously been found in patients with lung conditions, such as cystic fibrosis. The fungus used its roots to break apart the plastic, but its effectiveness was found to be influenced by other factors, such as temperature and pH levels. Researchers say that tweaking these could pave the way for fungi to be used in waste treatment plants or in soils impacted by plastic. There's around 9 billion tons of plastic in the world. That's the same as 20,000 Lady Liberties. Turns out Alaska's permafrost isn't very permanent. Permafrost covers nearly a quarter of the northern hemisphere. And if that melts, life as a whole lot of folks know it will be put on ice. Alaskan permafrost, layers of soil that remain consistently frozen, is thawing. And scientists think this may lead to a further rise in global warming, regardless of attempts to curb it. According to the New York Times, researchers withdrew water and sediment samples from permafrost cores and installed temperature probes in the ground. Their aim is to better understand how permafrost interacts with the environment. In northern Alaska, permafrost 65 feet deep is said to have warmed from minus 8 to minus 3 degrees Celsius over the past decades. Globally, permafrost is believed to hold approximately double the amount of carbon currently in the atmosphere. When it defrosts, the carbon is sent back into the atmosphere. Scientists believe this could warm the planets over the coming centuries. Asia's glaciers are shrinking. With Asian glaciers facing a massive melt by the end of the century, millions of people are at risk of water shortages. And it's all thanks to global warming. The high mountains of Asia lie in a region surrounding the Tibetan Plateau and contains the largest store of permanent ice outside the North and South Poles. Meltwater feeds into major rivers like the Indus, Yangtze, and Mekong and are used for drinking, hydroelectric power, and irrigation. Scientists predict that Asian high mountain glaciers will lose a third of their mass by 2100 if the global temperature rises 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. If temperatures increase 3.5, 4, or 6 degrees, losses could reach 49, 51, and 65 percent respectively. Glacial loss could affect the region's water supply and lead to shortages. At the same time, accelerated melting could trigger intense flooding, especially when combined with climate change-induced heavy rains and super typhoons. High warming scenarios carry worse consequences, including massive sea level rise, floods, droughts, loss of species, and even disease. The only way to avoid such a dismal future is by minimizing global temperature rise. And for that, we need to double, even triple efforts to combat climate change. Eating beans over meat could save the planet. A new study shows Americans should probably eat more beans than meat if the country wants to meet its emissions target. Cows emit methane due to a digestive process known as enteric fermentation. Most of the methane is released through belching, and only a small percentage is produced through flatulence. The massive amount of greenhouse gas produced by cows is comparable to the pollution produced by cars. Growing pulses is greatly beneficial to the environment, as they are able to directly draw nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into nutrients. This means a reduction in the amount of fossil fuels used to produce nitrogen to create these nutrients. It is also much more water efficient to grow pulses than to raise cattle. Beans also provide similar nutrients to the human body as beef, without the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, stroke, and colorectal cancer. Research shows changing the population's diet from beef to beans could help the U.S. meet its emissions target by 2020. Another study published in April recommended substituting meat with crickets and mealworms in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Would you give up your juicy steaks for beans and worms? 15 million Americans are drinking contaminated water. Drinking water is one of the most precious resources on the planet, but that same H2O that keeps billions alive may be hampering the health of millions of Americans. 
New research suggests that 47 locations in 27 states contain drinking water that has been affected by toxic perfluorochemicals, or PFCs. These locations include 20 industrial installations, 21 military bases, and seven firefighting sites. Some include multiple contamination sources. PFCs are highly fluorinated toxic chemicals linked to major health problems. The research focused on the spread of two types of PFCs, perfluorooctanoic acid and perfluorooctane sulfonic acid. Due to their non-stick properties, these types of PFCs are found in everyday items, such as frying pans, waterproof jackets, and even carpet stain protection. PFCs are linked to a variety of ailments, including thyroid disease, kidney cancer, and testicular cancer. They've also been shown to weaken some childhood immunizations. If you'd like to know more, you can visit www.ewg.org for a map of the impacted areas.